Good afternoon, everybody, or, or good morning still, I guess, for some of us on the West Coast. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming out to our State of Institute uh, address for 2020. I uh, appreciate everybody uh, coming and spending a little bit of time for us uh, uh, with us. So uh, before we dive into content, a couple of logistical things for everybody on the, uh, on the webinar today. If you have comments, if you have questions along the way, uh, please make sure to use the questions box. I'm happy to take questions certainly throughout the presentation. I'm going to leave a little bit of time at the end for people to throw in some questions as well. So I'm certainly encouraged there to have a little bit of interaction throughout the webinar. Uh, and if, uh, again, if you have comments, just uh, general stories or themes that you also saw as we kind of go through the presentation, uh, you feel free to throw those uh, into the question box as well. There's also probably like a comment box on there. Uh, I particularly watch the question box. That's so going to be your uh, easiest uh mode of uh, communication for me. On the flip side, the the uh, webinar is being recorded. So if you need uh, if you need a copy of the webinar, it'll, it'll be distributed or placed into your member center if you are, are a SEPA. If you're non-SEPA on the call um, <clears throat> and you'd like to uh, re, uh, recap uh, of this webinar to share, by all means, just reach out to one of our member experience representatives and we'll make sure to get that webinar over to you. So the State of the Institute address uh, for EPI really uh, kind of covers both SEPAs and non-SEPAs. So for the non-SEPAs on the call today that I might, <clears throat> excuse me, that I might not know, I'm going to do a brief introduction in, in, in my role here at uh, EPI. And as the webinar goes along, it's really, it's cut into two halves here. For her, the first half is going to be a quick recap and review of, of 2019. We're going to talk about themes from 2019, major milestones from 2019, things that we learned from our uh, research projects that we conducted, things that we learned from working with all of our SEPAs, so on and so forth, to really help us predict the second half of our webinar, which is a, a forecast and look into, into 2020. And so um, to tell you a little bit about uh, myself and my role here uh, at EPI, uh, rather than do a formal introduction, I'm typically one to just talk to you about why I'm passionate about what we do here uh, and my role here at uh, Exit Planning Institute. So role-wise, formerly um, the vice president and one of the owners here at Exit Planning Institute, uh, my role uh, particularly uh, here is managing our growth um, and working with all of our customers. And so I actually just got back from the Leading Edge Alliance uh, accounting conference in in, um, in Las Vegas. And so I get to travel quite a bit throughout the United throughout the United States to meet with and, and really represent all of our certified exit planning advisors, uh, take that information and come back to our office and then deliver it to people like our marketing teams, our member experience teams, our product teams, so that we can provide you with the best experience uh, and position you at the top of the market. Uh, when, when owners think about exit planning, they think about the certified exit planning advisor. And that's really my mission and, and, and my role here at EPI. What I'm passionate about is really maybe two or threefold. Number one, I'm an, I'm an exited owner. So I went through a transition myself in 2010, partnered up with my father, Chris, who was at the time a uh, managing a, an owner and manager of a consulting firm here in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, and helped him grow that business before we bought the Exit Planning Institute in, in, in 2012 when I came in in 2014. So my first passion really is that I'm an exited owner. And so it gives me a unique experience as I educate and work with all of you as professional advisors. I'm also uh, uh, an owner myself currently and an exit and owner, so it gives me a couple of unique perspectives. Next is really that I'm a, I'm a millennial business owner. And so if you were with us at our summit, maybe even I think it was a couple of years ago now, I said that I think our biggest challenge is, is really yet to come. So as we out in the marketplace and we're working with probably uh, most, most of us are working with the baby boomer business owner. Well, our biggest challenge I think is yet to come in the fact that as those baby boomers transition, we'll be educating and working with a whole new generation of business owners, the Gen Xers and millennials, people that might buy those baby boomer companies. And so our biggest challenge, I think, is not necessarily working in the immediate marketplace and allowing owners to understand, current owners, likely baby boomers, understand what exit planning is so that they can successfully transition. I'm really most passionate about educating the next generations of owners to come. You'll see that maybe in the second half of our presentation when we talk about themes and and a forecast. I think that the stuff that we're teaching owners today, the stuff that we're working with owners today, if we can do it and do it right, not only will the baby boomer uh, business owner have a successful exit, but we will generate a whole new thinking, uh, a whole new mindset for owners to come uh, in the Gen Xers and in the millennials. That's a little bit about me uh, and, and my role here at EPI. 
I'd like to start our State of the Institute address uh, by always revisiting our brand promise. If you you know, know obviously anything about business, the brand promise typically is more of an internal facing promise that we have uh, to our customers. But I'd like to show it, at least recap it here once a year in our State of the Institute address so that you guys all kind of know what your return on your return on investment is as a certified exit planning advisor with EPI. And if you're not a SEPA on the call today, what your return on investment is in interacting with us through online education like this, uh, maybe through some of our chapter network meetings, maybe even coming to the summit or reading one of our books. We believe uh, and we promise you as our customer to do three things. Number one, uh, provide you with the best industry content as it relates to value acceleration uh, and exit planning. Next is to provide you with ongoing advisor development and practice support. And next to provide, uh, I think it's probably one of the most critical ones, to provide you with a platform for connectivity to the business owner, to your end user. And so that could be through a piece of research, that could be through an owner facing event. Um, uh, there's multiple ways that we can provide some kind of connectivity to the, to the end user. But I think that the combination for those three things makes a very unique certified exit planning advisor experience uh, here at, at at EPI. My kind of one of my probably largest long-term goals is that you don't start to look at EPI, you stop looking at, I guess, at EPI as a another designation that you have to renew every single year. And you start looking at EPI as a true partner and resource in exit planning. One that not only provides you with the best content, but allows you to develop yourself as a professional advisor who wants to work with owners in transition. And frankly, at the end of the day, uh, on if you were looking at a lead report, a port where where do you get your business from that you that Exit Planning Institute actually ends up on that list for you because of this connectivity uh, to the business owner that we provide. So a couple of themes that I want to talk about that we saw in 2019. So a couple of years ago, we came out with this theme, Reinvent Yourself, and it has been a continued theme here throughout 2019. It's really one of two major themes that we have that actually kind of uh, relate more so than than ever in the past. So reinvent yourself is something that we showcase a lot at the SEPA program, and, is, and I, what I really think about when I, what what I really think SEPA is really all about. You know, a lot of us are CFPs or CPAs or attorneys, and have received a lot of technical training through our universities or our other associations where we obtained our credentials, and. Certainly for the CEPAs on the call, you do get technical training inside of the value acceleration methodology. But really what I think you get more so of is a, kind of a leadership transformation. Meaning that I think that to truly connect with a business owner and trigger owner action and have successful and fulfilling and uh, uh, exits for owners, we have to change the way that we operate as a professional advisor is that we all still need our, our expertise, right? We need the accounting background, we need the legal background, the financial or investment background, uh, perhaps the M&A background or the family transition background. What's nice about a SEPA is that everybody has a specialty. But what we all kind of uh, come together on, what connects all of us as professional advisors is this reinvention of ourselves? is this evolution that we're having uh, as the professional advisor who are all trying, who are all out there trying to, I think, connect three dots for the owners. I think that every owner has these three legs of the stools that we call them. What I call them is these three dots that are kind of floating around in the air. And in the owner's mind, they're kind of walking into the office every single day trying to connect those three dots. They're trying to say, how do I take my business needs and my business goals, connect them to my personal ambitions and my personal vision, and take a financial plan that puts everything and makes everything possible, puts it all together. And I think that I don't care if you're a CFP, a wealth manager, a CPA, an attorney, an investment banker, an ESOP provider, a family business specialist, I don't care what type of expertise that you have, what really brings us together as a certified exit planning advisor community, as an exit planning leader, is that we believe in connecting and aligning those three dots for the business owner. And that to me, folks, isn't actually technical training. It's more of this um, uh, 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 leadership type training that allows us to not only connect those dots for the owner, but in doing so work together as professional advisors more collaboratively than we ever have uh, as we ever had before. I think that was a, a deep theme that we came out with uh, in our in our uh, in 2000, it might have been actually 2017 during our 10 year anniversary of SEPA, and that has continued throughout for the past two or three years. I really think it's the essence of 
who we are as a community is that we're all out there, regardless of how long we've been in the business, trying to reinvent ourselves so that we can effectively work with business owners in transition. Piggybacking off that was our theme from our 2019 summit. So if you're at the summit, you saw all of this and you experienced this, this event. The theme of this year's or, or last year's 2019 summit was Evolve. So again, playing off the reinvent yourself is that for me, um, exit planning is really all around us. I think two years ago, our, our, our theme at our summit was exit is now. And so I think that it's more in front of us than we've ever seen it before. I think that we talk about this kind of wave of, of, of exits over the past 10 or maybe even 15 years now. And I think that that wave, if you will, is finally hitting our shores. And I think that if you look at it like that, if you looked at just the baby boomer business owner, I think the average baby boomer is maybe 62 or 63. You know, over the next five years, they'll be approaching 70. And for the people, uh, the upper end of those baby boomers over the next five or so years, they'll be approaching 80. The youngest, I think that over the you know course of the next five years, all baby boomers will be 60 years old or older. And so I think that harvesting their largest asset, which is their business, and de-risking their investment portfolio is probably more on their mind than they've ever seen before. Uh, plus, given our market, our current economy is probably one of the best economies that we've experienced. And I think that it shows that valuations are high, multiples are, are high. And so I think that exiting now is, is certainly something that are on a lot of baby boomer business owners mind. And again, playing off the, the reinvent yourself, I think that it's time for us to evolve with the evolving needs of business owners. Again, thinking about connecting those dots, thinking about what they want to do in the next act of their life, thinking about how they can de-risk their business and get the most value out of it. Business owners, if they haven't asked you already, are probably asking different types of questions to you as their professional and most trusted advisor than they ever have before. And in order to answer those questions and, and really fill that empty seat that I think sits at the business owner's advisory table, we ourselves need to involve. We need to increase our credibility as it relates to helping owners exit. We need to enhance our leadership skills. And if we can do those things, we'll accelerate exits uh, and make and have owners have very fulfilling, uh, very fulfilling exits that are really have all three legs of those stool aligned. So and again, another another uh, another key theme I think at a part of our 2019 campaigns. So let's visit some kind of key milestones or achievements from our EPI or exit planning community. Number one, I think that when I was kind of putting together this presentation. I frankly thought that SEPAs are very much alive and active in the marketplace. Uh, we are actually, we hit a thousand plus SEPAs actively in the market this year, achieved a lot of major milestones, and it's really not EPI achieving a milestone, it's really SEPAs in the community uh, achieving a milestone. So I think that, you know, SEPA is certainly alive and well for those of you maybe that were a part of the first 100 or, or got certified maybe even, you know, pre-2015. Uh, when there was only maybe a hundred or so of us out there, uh, I think that exit planning awareness, certified exit planning advisors are more top of mind uh, to owners and to fellow advisors than they than they ever have been before. So when I was, again, when I think about our major milestone, if I could sum up anything on the screen, it's it's that SEPAs are very much active and the market is very very much alive, and I believe that SEPAs are the pioneers or the leaders, uh, kind of blazing that trail. More specifically, some key milestones. A lot of you interact in our chapter network. Our chapter network grew to 37 chapters this year. I think they produced something north of 200 plus meetings uh, in 2019. So certainly something we'll spend a little bit more time in in our 2020 strategy, but nonetheless, a big milestone was hit for the chapters. Uh, continued owner facing events, and it's probably the biggest wow factor of, of 2019 for me, is that our SEPAs out in the marketplace and their non-SEPA collaborative partners, their other professional advisors that they work with, particularly in our regional or local chapters, have produced some very significant owner facing events in, in 2020. Orange County and LA uh, combined to do a, a Southern California Owners Forum. Wisconsin did another Owners Forum. Uh, tw the Twin Cities partnered again with various partners, ACG included, to produce their third annual Owners Forum event. I think if you ask Julie and, and some of her uh, team out there in the Twin C over there in the Twin Cities, uh, I was actually at their event in October, and I could tell you that I think it's the value acceleration event of that particular region. So 
celebrating their third annual owners forum there. And then Mark Kravitz in New York City, a very, very active SEPA and an, uh, an, an award-winning SEPA, uh, celebrated his fifth annual owners forums with his partners and will be coming out with a state of owner readiness research project in, 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 in 2020. So a, a, a few uh, large owner forum, half day, full day style of events uh, that I think were all major home runs uh, and certainly spreading that awareness. My, I just spoke about this at the LEA conference. It was led by uh, a few SEPAs there, um, part of uh, Lutz and Company, an accounting firm there uh, in, in Nebraska. I could tell you that this was by far, in my opinion, the number one event, number one owner facing event that a SEPA produced in 2020. And so uh, Bill Kennedy kind of spearheaded this project, uh, a longtime SEPA. I would say, look him up on findasepa.com or look up Lutz and Company. I would use him as a case study example of what a owner facing project should look like. They had amazing collaborative partners. They involved EPI, uh, they spread awareness. They had owners panels, they had advisor panels. It was, a, 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 I think a major win uh, for every partner involved. Uh, and I think a major win, I think, for the exit planning and SEPA community overall, because if I could take that, outline it, and reuse it, uh, you know, per Bill's uh, per per Bill's permission, I think that he made a major impact on the way SEPAs can interact with business owners. To tell you a little bit more specifically about that, they did a basically this. Everything was kicked off with the state of owner readiness research. So they spent about, um, uh, you know, spent about probably six or eight months. Uh, working with EPI and conducting this Nebraska State of Owner Readiness Research Project. Once the, uh, once the uh, research project was complete, they went on a, a mini roadshow that was all leading up to a hometown, Omaha, Nebraska, which is where their business is, 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 is headquartered, uh, launch event. And so they did these mini roadshows in maybe three or four different cities throughout Nebraska, traveling around, speaking about the, speaking about the, the results and, and and how we should do things differently and how owners can build value in their company, so on and so forth. But in Omaha, they had a half day owners forum event that was an afternoon event followed by a happy hour. They had a, a 45 minute owners panel with a, a private equity firm, a family business, a third party sale and, a, uh, and, a, and an ESOP provider or an ESOP firm, all owners that have made these transitions or are in a transition. The family transition is actually the Omaha Stakes family. Uh, I met Todd there and um, he talked to me about being the fifth generation business owner. And if you know anything about EPI, we're also a family business. So that is certainly uh, something uh, that was uh, a pretty cool and unique experience for me. Uh, they started off by having me kind of keynote and launch out the event for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. That was followed by an advisory panel that spoke to the results of the state of owner readiness survey. And so they had about 240 people at the event, 130 lower middle market business owners at the event. And I could tell you that I think 99% of that audience stuck around uh, for uh, the happy hour that they hosted uh, post event with appetizers and drinks. Uh, and I could tell you that it was really cool to see the audience basically, you know, a hundred something advisors and a hundred something business owners all commingle and interact uh, and, and really be excited about uh, 2020 and, and, and what's to come. And I spoke to Bill at the Leading Edge Alliance conference and he's gotten, you know, uh, him and his partner have gotten several leads and, and have uh, advanced several conversations since then. So I think a, a massive home run and I really appreciate them involving us and, and having me personally out at their event. Uh, last but not least, smaller style events, right? So we've talked a lot about these large events, 200 something people, one day kind of forums or symposiums. There are dozens of smaller and more intimate groups going on throughout the United States led by our SEPA as a part of our owner engagement membership. So part of the OEM group are SEPAs that are trained in facilitating owner round stable conversation. And for me, it's for me, if you're thinking about trying to get some notes here for your 2020 strategies, this is probably my favorite and probably most um, our, our most impactful tool that we can use in, in, in 2020. So there are several SEPAs out there across the United States doing these uh, more intimate owner roundtables. There are about eight people to 15 people, all being owners meeting on a monthly basis to talk very specifically about what it means to build value in your company and transition. And so you can think about it as like a mini Vistage style group but more hands-on, more interactive, and certainly more focused around what it takes 
to drive value in our business and align those three legs of the stool. And so you can think of it as a 12 month owner education program for you as the professional advisor it gives you multiple touch points, 12 touch points throughout the, throughout the year uh, with, your, with your owner clients. I think super uh, impactful, uh, really educates the business owner on what it means to exit your business or what it means to be build value. Uh, and, and, and more selfishly for us as SEPA is trying to understand our best and, and most uh, highest return on investment. Uh, I think that this is, is probably it. You're connecting with the owner, you're influencing the owner, you're educating the owner, and that kind of investment pays off. And so um, there are dozens of these happening and dozens growing throughout the United States. This year, over 400 new SEPAs entered the marketplace uh, through becoming certified exit planning advisors in 2019. Uh, that took us to over 1,000 SEPAs actively in the marketplace. Certainly not that of the 85,000 CFPs that are out there or the 660,000 CPAs that are out there, but I can promise you folks that we're certainly on that way, really changing uh, the way business owners think. So I'm pretty happy to see over 1,000 SEPAs actively in the marketplace. And last, but not least, if you're a part of it, this is a Super Bowl event for us each year. It is my favorite event that we produce. The Exit Planning Summit this year became the largest exit planning centric conference in the United States today. Uh, not only thanks to our SEPAs, but thanks uh, to some of our collaborative partners uh, that entered our Alliance Partner Program and also partnered, uh, partnered with us uh, at our summit. And I mentioned these folks, not only to give them another shout out and thank you for making these things possible, uh, but I would watch these folks throughout 2020 uh, because these are most of these folks are a part of our endorsed alliance partner program. And if you're a SEPA sitting on the call, I don't care if it's an assessment that you need, a tool or resource that you need. It might be a revenue generating per, uh, uh, relationship. Uh, these partners that you see on your screen today provide you with those types of tools and opportunities to, to advance you as a SEPA, connect you with other advisors, build your practice, and eventually connect you more with, with business owners. And so, again, a big thanks to everybody that's on this list and then some. Uh, but nonetheless, again, another note for 2020 is to jump on our, on our Alliance Partner page under the resource tab of the EPI website because these people here are all looking to help you work better with business owners and grow your exit planning uh, and grow your exit planning practice. So mo a lot of these folks as well are fellow certified exit planning advisors. So it even makes more sense to collaborate and learn from each other and collaborate and advance uh, business owner relationships and advance opportunities for all of us as professional advisors. So what did we learn from 2019? So a lot of research was, is always conducted here at EPI, a lot of surveying always conducted. So we compiled a couple slides here of, of what I think are some of the trends and findings from 2019 that we should really, um, uh, I guess, take and, and, and learn from and advance on in 2020. What we saw is that 70% of owners are looking, are attempting to transition within the next five years. If you looked at some of the, the more regional state of owner readiness stuff that we did, some other surveys that are outside of EPI, I think the number is growing. I think it makes sense. Uh, as we started off our webinar talking about today, uh, I think owners are kind of in that ripe time. I think it's kind of a ripe market for, uh, for exit right now. And so I think that de-risking conversations are more relevant than ever. Building value is more in their mind, thinking about what the heck they wanna do after transition. So, uh, you know, a major push, I think, for exits, which in the within the next five years. We saw that when owners were, about 60% of advisors, uh, about, of owners actually, would engage in exit planning if the advisor approached them uh, a little bit differently. This comes from our, this kind of intrigue and empower continued research and, and campaign that we have that was actually based on 2016 research that we did around what really triggers owner action. And so, 60% of owners would do something with you, meaning actively work with you, if you just change your approach a little bit. And so I would recommend that you jump on one of our, uh, you know, sales and marketing and business development webinars uh, to talk, uh, webinar series that we talk about, how do we better engage business owners so that they take action and focus on their exits. And so again, 60% of owners would work with an advisor if they just were approached a little bit differently. We also saw that on average, 80% of owners agreed that having a transition strategy is important to success. And so not only just in business, but in personal life as well. So that's, uh, I think, uh, that, that's, I think, uh, very encouraging to see that they believe that 
transition strategy is more important than it has ever has been before. And overall attendance at our SEPA produced owner facing events are up. And so uh, you heard about all the owners forums that I just talked about and owner roundtables that I talked about. So I think this positions us in 2020 uh, pretty favorably. We're seeing that 70% of owners are, are, are interested in exit. 60% of owners would take action if they were just approached a little bit differently. 85% of owners uh, thinking that exit strategy is, is important to them. And overall attendance at owner facing events are, are frankly not just up, but way up. And so uh, the impact of education, the impact of exit planning, I think is again, more, more in our face than it's ever, uh, ever has been before. We also saw continued high demand for content to help connect to business owners. So we see business owners reading or listening to podcasts, maybe reading a blog or maybe a small journal or, 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 or book. We saw continued high demand for content from uh, by business journals and, and other, other media outlets. We saw more collaboration between SEPAs than ever before, in my opinion. Uh, there are more and more kind of uh, collaborative groups emerging. Um, I was just on the phone um, with one of our SEPAs last week talking to him about all the relationships that he has built over the year of, be, uh, of, of being a SEPA. And so I just think collaboration, which is really a core pillar for us as SEPAs, uh, is more alive than it ever has been before. And we saw that the three types of SEPAs are still, uh, have still emerged pretty true. I think it's a, a key differentiator for us as, as an as a EPI community, because I think some of the time out in the marketplace, people look at the certified exit planning advisor and say, ah, oh, those people don't really do exit planning. Uh, certainly if you're looking out there at, at, at some of your competitors, whether they're certified or not, if they're working in exit planning, I have heard and, and been a part of groups where people said, nah, I don't know if SEPAs really do exit planning. And I just obviously don't think that that's true. I think that anybody that's advancing a conversation, having a better and more holistic approach, accelerating exits, uh, fast tracking liquidity and helping an owner de-risk the business, whether that's through a connection, a talk, uh, or physically doing the work is most definitely uh, an exit planning advisor. And so we look at our SEPAs, for those of you that are non-SEPAs, we look at SEPAs in really three ways. The first group is the people that are doing exit planning work, the value advisors. So the value advisors are, are typically more consultative in their approach. They're the traditional quarterback of the exit planning team. They're literally getting paid to do uh, and execute the entire value acceleration methodology. The next are multi-service firms. Now these could be value advisors that are a part of a firm that provides owners with all kinds of different services. These are likely your accounting firms. They do tax, audit, they might have an IT or a wealth department or division, and now they have an exit planning or M&A division as well. So they could be value advisors, but they're, these, these types of value advisors are part of a multi-service firm. These also could be uh, investment banking type partners, people that might do valuation on the front end and, and represent you on the back end and selling to a third party. They've added exit planning in the middle to really connect all of these dots for the owner. The next are the influencers. So the influencers became SEPAs because they want to do, they want to have better influence on an owner. They want to act as a connector to the right advisors for the owner. They want to have an early seat at the table. They want to be a better collaborator with other SEPAs. So these people typically do not charge for exit planning work, but they are out there in the marketplace, certainly changing the way business owners think, which will eventually change the overall outcome of the sale of their company, whether internally uh, or externally. So that was 2019 uh, in a quick, maybe half hour, uh, half hour recap. I want to spend the second half of our program here today, though, talking to you about what 2020 now looks like based on the findings, trends, programs that we experienced in, in, in 2019. And I can tell you that EPI has advanced their three year strategy and we have entered into a time uh, of some very strategic advancement for our organization. Uh, which will strategically advance the SEPAs in the marketplace. So we have uh, embarked on a uh, pretty uh, big journey over over uh, the next couple of years. And so uh, I'd like to share some of that with, with all of you and hopefully uh, get you excited for stuff to come. First, I kind of want to focus, uh, I guess, let's do this in maybe three segments. The first segment are going to be uh, program highlights. Second segment is going to be a uh, kind of focus points more strategically. The next one are questions for you and for owners, and then some overall themes that I'm seeing for, for emerge for 2020. The first is our SEPA program. So we're moving from six programs to eight programs. So there's going to be two in San Diego, two in Chicago, one in Atlanta, 
one here at the home base in, in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, a New York City program, and then a, an additional Southeast program that's kind of to be announced. And so a couple of cool highlights there. San Diego, Chicago, and Atlanta have always kind of been SEPA cities. We've moved back from Phoenix to San Diego. That's been one change. But the other three are going to be three brand new programs. I'm pretty excited to bring one to, to my hometown. Uh, if, you, if you know me and know me well, I'm a lifelong Clevelander. Uh, travel the country and uh, quite a bit and always love coming back home. I'm, I'll be here uh, hopefully my entire life, uh, but I'm so I'm very happy to have one at, at home base and, and share with you our city, uh, my city and um, and our offices here at, at EPI. New York City, so for those of you in uh, perhaps New York, Philly, Boston, Jersey, uh, we'll be coming to you in uh, in the summertime. Uh, and then again, likely a Southeast program that is to be determined, maybe in Florida, maybe in Texas, something there in the in the perhaps you know sent, uh, Southeast. We had a bunch of new faculty additions to the SEPA program in 2019. So we've advanced the SEPA program. We tried to move in instructors that are also SEPAs, so people that kind of speak the language. So we're really excited about that. They've been worked into the eight programs throughout the year. So we'll see some new faces along the way. Our intention is to add another 560 new SEPAs into the marketplace today. They will become certified this year. And if you want to see those programs or learn anything more about SEPA, you can, you can go to earnsepa.com. The next big event for me is the Exit Planning Summit. Uh, the Exit Planning Summit will be held September 13th to the 16th. Uh, it's in San Diego at the Estancia La Jolla. Uh, again, a, a, a significant partner for us. They have an awesome learning facility. To be totally honest with you folks, we are, are we pretty nearly bought out their entire hotel. So if you've ever been to a summit, I say this probably every single year, you'll probably laugh, but I think this one is going to be the best one yet. And so uh, we hit a huge milestone last year in becoming the largest exit planning center conference in the United States today. Uh, we're going to build on the, that momentum in, in 2020, and we have a pretty unique program for all of you in San Diego. So. Yeah, I would plan three full days. You're arriving on Sunday the 13th, and then we're going to hang out for uh, three days. And the three days are all very much different. I would say that it's the traditional meets the untraditional type conference. So if you're a professional advisor here on our call today, I could I could only bet that you guys have been to dozens of professional education, professional advisory conferences throughout the year. You know, I just came from one in, in, in the Leading Edge Alliance Global Conference, their World Conference. And I could tell you that uh, we like to spice things up a little bit, is that Monday is going to be a little bit more traditional in form, breakout sessions, keynote speakers, speakers, panel discussions. Tuesday becomes very untraditional. So if you are SEPA on our, on, uh, with us today, we kind of mirror your SEPA process, your SEPA experience, meaning that every lecture is kind of followed by some interaction, some application. So you're not just sitting there listening to people talk at you all day. Uh, we literally break 300 plus people into small groups. Uh, and we do small case study group work throughout the day. We have our power sessions, which are like our TED Talk type sessions. So 10 or 15 minute shots of, of high quality information. If you were with us this or in 2019, we did SEPA Family Feud, a game show uh, that we did over lunch to introduce some research and the results of that research. So very day two, very high energy, very interactive, uh, very, uh, very much building your collaborative network, being able to work with other SEPAs and really get to know them. Uh, and then last but not least on day three, day three is very deep dive and very singular focus. And so we're going to go very deep, very expert. So you might follow a marketing track, a valuation track, an investment strategies track. Um, uh, so you're going to go very deep for about six or eight hours, uh, uh, you know, uh, really getting uh, uh, very focused and expert advice and workshop style form on day three. So again, uh, something to uh, certainly uh, look for uh, in 2020. So moving in from programs to maybe some strategic you know, focal points are uh, really maybe a handful of things that I want to put on your radar uh, for 2020. One, for me personally, uh, we have some continued internal growth to do here at EPI. If, you're a, uh, if you go to CNBC and you watch the show The Profit, Marcus Limonis, he's the CEO of Camping World and a, an entrepreneur in his own right, owning se several businesses. If I highly encourage watching the show. I had an opportunity to meet him briefly at our SEPA program, actually, in Atlanta. 
but he talks about people, products, and process. So there's four or three things when he looks at buying or investing uh, into a business. And as I was, again, putting together our presentation today, Mark Marcus popped in my head and I, I wanted to share with all of you kind of what we're doing here internally. So recently we moved into, uh, recently we moved from 11 people to 16 people. So now we have 16 people here on our team. We'll be at 21 people by 2021. Uh, we are uh, mainly because I'm, we're moving into a very, very, uh, customer focused mindset to say what are the appropriate process tools people that SEPAs need to advance themselves in the marketplace and so uh, our teams are becoming very very much customer focused and not just from a product that is the SEPA program but products solutions process things that are needed to help the SEPA advance and get in front of more owners lead more collaborative teams and win people think about value acceleration and exit planning uh, and the way in which to run a good business, they think about, uh, they think about SEPAs first. Uh, lastly, from a process standpoint that uh, probably is, uh, may put a smile on some of our SEPAs faces that we've moved into a new member portal. So we'll be advancing that member portal throughout the year. It won't be launched probably till about mid-year, but nonetheless, we're gonna have a brand new members portal. Uh, certainly when I think of process, I think of structural capital kind of following our own concepts, philosophies, and methodology, uh, there will be a new members portal that's launched for our certified exit planning advisors about likely about mid to, to end of the year. Uh, I talked about being very uh, very customer focused. Uh, I think that there are uh, some tools, assessments, resources, programs, uh, education that is lacking right now for, for SEPAs, something that we're going to strategically address as we begin to know our customers a little bit more uh, and get to know what solution is right for you. So uh, very customer focused. We'll be hosting an EPI headquarters open house on July 15th here in Westlake, Ohio, which is where our, our offices are, are located. We did a kind of a, a mini launch of this, kind of test drove this concept in 2019, it went well. And so if you're looking to come meet some of the people that you might interact with virtually or over the phone, uh, and you wanna meet them in person and, and see how we do things here at EPI, I certainly put that on your calendar. It's gonna be in Cleveland on July 15th. Next is our last two. I, there's certainly some advancements in online education and, and general awareness. I think that it's the, the quickest way for somebody to learn a little bit more about exit planning. We have anywhere between about seven and 12 different types of webinars going on at any given time throughout the year, any given month. And so there are literally dozens or hundreds of webinars that we produce each year. I think uh, it's a great way for you to learn more about what exit planning is, or perhaps even hit, you know, have an owner sit on a webinar with you and learn more about what this journey might look like. And last but not least, talking about owners, we're going to further develop educational tools and resources that educates the owner and allows you to connect better uh, with them in, in 2020. Strategic questions. So I think there are some st strategic questions that we saw in 2019 that I think are going to be, again, even more relevant in 2020. First thing that's on my mind is how long is this market going to hold? And why that's important to owners in transition is because I think baby boomer business owners specifically really have two choices right now in, in 2020. Do I sell my company right now, given the market, right? Valuations are high, multiples are high. It's a great market, I think, to sell your company. I think private equity has a lot of money on the table. Uh, people are looking for quality businesses uh, to invest in and grow. So even, even if you had to take a little bit of a haircut as, a, as an owner, because it's likely that your business isn't all that ready, selling now might be the best thing for you, especially if you're 65, 70, 75 years old. Because if the market does turn, whether it's this year or next year, you're going to be likely focused on holding your business. And if you're a 70 year old person that might take it to 75 or, or, or longer. So I think that the other question, if it's not sell now, it's do I hold and do I address value? Do I look at value acceleration? Do I connect with a SEPA? Frankly, guys, I think that there's no better time to focus on value acceleration and aligning your personal and personal financial plans than ever before. This is the market to do that. So frankly, my advice now, even though it might be a, a great time to sell your company, I would say hold that, hold that business and let's hunker down and focus on value acceleration in a three to five year strategy. Because I think our timeline is going to be critical. So for you as the certified exit planning advisor, are you positioned to support these needs, evolve, reinvent yourself with the business owner? 
So I think, again, further education is going to be critical, really helping owners understand what it means to grow value in their business. I think changing our approach with owners to a more consultative, relationship-based, solution-based conversation is going to be critical. And I think that addressing value acceleration in the, in, in the three to five year strategy is also going to be critical. If you heard me talk, I think at this past year's summit, I said that I actually believe for my really two years of, of really understanding and working with owners, uh, I think owners are actually doing exit planning every single day. I just don't think they call it exit planning. They might call it the four intangible capitals. They might call it uh, doing just doing business. I think that generally, what our job is in 2020 and beyond is not just to connect those dots, but make some of the unintentional stuff that owners do every day, very intentional, very methodic, very process oriented, so that it really relates to a, a kind of a larger goal that's connected to our business, personal uh, and financial plans. So a couple of themes uh, that I'd like you to take home uh, with you for 2020. The seat is still empty, folks. Last year, we introduced this concept of the empty seat. I think that those chairs right there, those black chairs, are all full of uh, qu high quality professional advisors. Your CPA, your financial planner, your attorney, uh, perhaps a growth consultant. But in the red seat, there's no one sitting there. That red seat is the certified exit planning advisor, or it should be. That the owner, I think what is lacking is again, somebody that kind of makes sense of all this, is that you have this, family coach over here, you have this CPA over here, you have this attorney over here. The owner needs somebody that they can connect with that will uh, perhaps even be a little bit patient to kind of nurture that relationship, educate them along the way, and quarterback and put together this entire thing. That red seat there is what I'm calling the, the, the CVO, a concept that frankly, Peter Christman introduced to us a few years back, is that I believe, just like an owner might have a temporary CFO or uh, an, an outsourced CIO, I think that owners are going to start to look at C certified exit planning advisors as chief value officers, CVOs. That CVO will sit in that red seat that is now empty, that seat that allows an owner to connect these dots, make the unintentional intentional, make things very deliberate, and aggressively accelerate the value of their business while aligning their personal and financial goals and needs. One, I, this is a theme that I haven't introduced to my team yet, but I'm, I'm thinking about making the theme for our summit and for our entire year, and it's simply strategic advancement. And so I think that we've embarked on a three-year strategy that not only will obviously grow the Exit Planning Institute and the impact of SEPAs, but advance the certified exit planning advisor like we haven't seen, uh, like we really haven't seen before. I think that the stuff that we're doing today, if you fast forward three or five years, will literally change the way owners and advisors interact. I think that it becomes the gold standard. I think that if we can do what we've started, uh, what we've embarked on as SEPAs and as a leader here at EPI, uh, it'll really change the way owners think. It'll change the way they connect their business and personal goals. Uh, it'll change the way they look at business and personal. Uh, and I think that it'll change the way, frankly, they do business every single day. And so um, if you flash again another five years, so make it a 10 year strategy, I believe this can be so impactful that colleges and universities uh, take the value acceleration methodology and incorporate it into their business classes. So that students now coming out of a undergrad program or an MBA program think in a value acceleration methodology mindset before they even walk in the front doors of a business. I really do think that um, our business today, the stuff that we're doing together as EPI and certified exit planning advisors is the next Uber. It's the next Amazon, it's the next Google. It'll change the way we interact together as a community of advisors and owners, and it'll change the way owners run their business. And I think that it'll make for a very prosperous country. It'll make for a very uh, lucrative business uh, and a very happy culture of owner uh, and employees uh, and, and advisors. So in 2020, when we walk back in from our little downtime uh, over the holidays. Uh, I shared these stories and themes with uh, my team here at EPI, and that's what we're focused on. We're focused on making the value acceleration methodology the way in which we do business, and as the bridge and the connector between owner and advisor, 
so that when we look even a short time from now, three to five years, the marketplace, the mindset has totally changed and has had massive positive uh, impacts. So how can you make an impact personally in 2020? So I challenge you with three things. If I were you, if I was a certified exit planning advisor, I'd simply do three things and three things only in my business development or owner engagement or marketing strategy. Number one, I would produce owner education opportunities, plain and simple. I would host owner roundtables on a monthly basis. I would be the person that owners go to for this high quality education. I would diversify the groups. I might have just regular old, you know, a general group of, of uh, lower middle market business owners meeting on a monthly ba basis to talk about value acceleration. I would have a next gen, people in their 20s and 30s that are taking over mom and dad's business or, or maybe uh, uh, a built-in successor to an owner today. I would have an all female uh, women owned business uh, 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 women owned business round table. Uh, and I would again become the go-to person when somebody thinks about value acceleration and exit planning, uh, I would create that forum for business owners. I would do 12 months of owner education. I would meet over lunch for an hour and a half. I would surround owners with the top two advisors that they look at. Number one, you, the professional advisor. And if you look at the state of owner readiness survey, the number two most trusted advisor for any owner is their owner peer group fellow CEOs, COOs, presidents, vice presidents, owners of lower middle market businesses. I could tell you that stands true for me. I turned to my professional advisors, likely second, guys. I turned to my owners first and my professional advisors second uh, when, I'm, uh, when I'm looking uh, for advice. And probably, guys, to be true with you, I actually look at my own team here before I even approach anybody else. And so I think that if we can create that opportunity for them on a monthly basis, really showcase what exit planning is, you will trigger owner action throughout that entire process. Number two, I'd create collaborative groups. I create groups of people that believe in the same things, the same organizing principle. The organizing principle for any exit planning team is the concept of master planning. The things that make us different as SEPAs out in the marketplace is that we believe that a fulfilling, satisfied, and a successful exit only happens when three things are aligned and equal. Number one, we've maximized the value of their business. Number two, we gave them a sound uh, personal financial plan. And number three, we've aligned their personal goals with what they want to do in the next act or the third act or whatever act of their of their life. And so I would surround myself with people that do that so that we can generate business for each other. And then you almost have your Navy SEAL type team that goes into any exit planning engagement that you have. Last but not least, I would spread awareness through speaking. And I'm not necessarily just saying get up in front of a bunch of people and speak. Uh, that might not be comfortable for everybody, but I think that speaking through a podcast, speaking through written word, speaking through literally going up on a podium and, 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 and speaking, I think that there's many ways for us to engage with a business owner when you kind of generalize speaking. So I would look at trade organization, something like the Ohio Manufacturing Association. I think our SEPA, Amy Wirtz, is one of the SEPAs that does this the best. She has a very special niche in family business and more specifically in family campgrounds and resorts. She goes to their annual conference and speaks about value acceleration. I could tell you that she is unique. There's not many people that have a booth set up at a campground uh, convention where they're talking about how to rapidly grow value in your business. And so I think it's a massive impact for her and her business. And I would encourage everybody looking at trade organizations. I would encourage everybody writing for business journals. I would encourage people to write small articles or even books. I would encourage people to do research. And lastly, I would encourage people to do a, bot, a podcast or, or a blog. Frankly, guys, I don't know if many owners jump on LinkedIn and read your LinkedIn posts. I, I actually... In prep for this, this I, I literally LinkedIn searched six owners here locally, and they had like 10 connections. And so uh, I don't really know if I, I think it's a great way to develop collaborative relationships with advisors, people that like to work with you. But I don't know if we're reaching owners through writing on LinkedIn blogs. But I do think we're reaching owners uh, if they tune into their uh, tune into our 30 minute podcast as they drive into their office every day or they sit having a cup of coffee in the morning. Some of that's more motivating, uh, inspirational uh, and educational. So I showcase our chapter network here. I call them practice groups. I mentioned them at the start of our uh, webinar today. They do much more than break some bread and have a little CPE event in the morning. Uh, they do do that. They have unique education, uh, a very diverse group of advisors. But I could tell you that they do. They write for business journals locally. They produce owner forums events. They produce a ton of research. And so if you're not in a chapter, I would get, highly get involved in a chapter. 
if you're in one of the states and highlighted in the white, if you're in one of the states highlighted in the white, I would say if you're interested in starting a chapter, uh, let's talk. I'd like to see that uh, certainly grow north of 40 chapters in 2020. Last but not least, if you're a SEPA on the call today, you have two fine gentlemen that are your member experience representatives, and so they will allow you to grow and advance your business in 2020. My first stop would be uh, to visit beyondsepa.com. So you should look at beyondsepa.com. Beyondsepa.com takes you into those three types of SEPA, value advisors, multi-service firms, uh, and uh, the influ influencers. It puts you on a fast track to excel to to uh, to build your thought leadership and your expertise through programs and education. And so I would try to understand what type of advisor I, are you, what role do you want to play in 2020, who is on that team, and if you want to have somebody to put that all together for you, I would visit our member experience team here uh, in our office uh, by calling uh, by calling office or looking up these two fine gentlemen on the About Us page of EPI and, and shooting them an email. And so I would get really interactive with these guys, uh, certainly in 2020. Last but not least, I leave you with a message that I started with uh, as we opened up uh, and reviewed 2019. We are in a massive evolution of the way business owners think and the needs of business owners. I would challenge you to get engaged with EPI, whether it's through a summit, a chapter meeting, or becoming a SEPA, and reinvent yourself so that when that owner does knock on that door, send you an email, or give you a phone call, or shoot you a text, and they say, I wanna start talking about how to de-risk my business, uh, diversify my investment portfolio and pull some chips off the table so I can look at the next act of my life. You're sitting there saying, I have the leadership tools, I have the leadership ex or I have the leadership expertise and the technical expertise needed and the network behind me to positively affect change for business owners and put SEPAs at the top. So with that, folks, I appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me uh, uh, today in our state of owner or our, our state of the institute address. I'm going to pause here quickly to see if there are any um, any questions that we might have about anything we talked about today? All right, folks, I was either uh, very boring or maybe very motivational, I don't know, but there's no questions there. Uh, if you guys have anything at all, make sure that you shoot me an email uh, uh, or shoot our member experience team an email. I appreciate you spending an hour of your uh, day with me today. As you can tell, I'm pretty fired up for 2020. Uh, really looking to put SEPAs at the top of that at the top of that chart. Uh, really advance the way we're doing things, and I look forward to interacting with all of you, whether it be a phone call, an email, a SEPA program, a summit, or a chapter visit. I will see you in 2020. Make sure that you think about EPI and your strategic plans, and lean on us to build your business and advance owner relationships. Thanks, everybody.